So the number one question I get on YouTube, in Facebook, uh, not so much in person, especially if I'm with the car, but if I'm by myself, the number one question I get and the most um, heartfelt question I get is, Rob, what sort of advice can you give me to have a life either like yours or to the best of my ability? And I, I, that is such a humbling thing to be asked. And, it, and uh, it's not infrequent. It happens all the time. And I mean, they're pages. And I truly read every single one of them. Some of them are a little off balance to where I can't answer them because people are putting too much trust into me. So here's my answer to when people ask, what advice do you have to give? So the very first issue is I don't have advice to give you. I really don't. I hate to say it that way, but the question that I'm being asked is good natured. It mean, you guys mean well, but you're asking the wrong question. The best question I can answer is what advice would I give somebody in my spot? Because I don't know your story. I've got certain advantages in my life and I've got certain disadvantages, not many, but certain ones that you don't. So if I was to say, hey, here's what's gonna work. Start an IT company. Try buying a building when you're 21. That's completely bullshit. That's not good advice for you. And much less, my personality is different than yours. So any sort of advice I give you is bad because I don't know any better. I don't know what else works. I can guess, but I don't know. So please understand that I get kind of squeamish and I, I truly want to help. You know what I mean? Like I want to give advice because I, I want to help, but that's, that's misplaced. That's not the right thing I should be doing. So. Here's the advice I'm going to give. It's what I would tell somebody who is me in a previous situation, in a, in a pre previous point in life. Say I'm 17, 18, that seems to be a, a common age. And so here's both regrets and things that I did right that I would do better, uh, further, harder, as I tried to get to where I am now. So first of all, experience the whole fucking world. Every, every bit of it. This is probably the one thing that people like go, oh, cool, I'll do that. No, I'm dead serious. Is that I think one of the biggest problems people have is they have, they, they have a gut feeling. They want something from life, but they don't have a damn clue what it is. I was there too. I still am there. That always happens. You are always going to be wanting something and you're not gonna know what it is. And that eats away at you. So what I'm telling you to do, and this, this is advice that if you're remotely like me, I will step overstep my boundaries and say, it's pretty good advice. I mean, it's just kind of like common sense in the sense of once you've done it, looking back, is experience everything. Everything that you're kind of interested in, everything that might be, everything that you might regret, go do it. Especially when you're whatever age you are. It doesn't matter because tomorrow's worse. Today's better to get into it because you have less fear, less risk, less things holding you back. Now is the best time. And you know what? There are people out there like myself. And if you, you know, the majority of you that message me, you know, I message you back. There are people out there in other fields, just like me, who are not just uh, business owners, they're partners in your life. They try and help you for nothing other than just, you know, helping the world, you know, make the world a, try in their own weird way of making the world a better place. So if you, if you're somebody like me, who loves computers, but also loves people, also loves a lot of other things in life. Do all of them. You can. That's the biggest bullshit excuse that I hear is like, well, which one should I pick? No, that's not your issue. And you know, a jack of all trades, master of none, that's, a, that's an issue once you go further. But right now, when you're the age that keeps asking me, and when I was at that point, I wish I had gone and done more. And you, there's so many school aids, there's so many, you know, get your parents mad, but have them pay for a trip, whatever. The fact is, is that that's minor in comparison to fucking up the rest of your life. So go, do, experience, because you know what's going to happen when you're out there? You're going to know. And 90% of it, you're going to say, well, this is stupid. And that's the right thing, because at least when you're going and doing the, the thing that you're passionate about, you know for a fact the other ones aren't greener, aren't, you know, the other pasture isn't greener, that whole cliche. You know for a certain fact that you're where you need to be. The second piece of advice I would give myself in a heartbeat, and this is a regret for me, is go where the people are. Don't try to make everything, don't try and jumpstart the whole world. And 
I still feel invincible. There's, there's an issue about age and, and stubbornness and, and invincibility where you feel like, you know what? I'm going to buck the system because I can, because I've got all the resources. I'm the smartest guy. I know I could, I've got the biggest heart. But giving heart and being the best at something, you still have a limited resource, and that's time. And what, I'm 30 now, okay? So I've been around enough to know that, well, I, I know how a decade of, of effort feels. And it's not that long. And it only gets shorter because as life goes on, you get used to it. So you don't have that much time. You can be the brightest, the best, so don't try and take over the whole entire world because it's not you that does it anyway. That's the biggest fallacy that people tell themselves is like, yeah, I'm going to do something nobody else has done. No, you're not because it takes a whole team of people to do that. So it's not just you. And so when, when it comes to things like that, you have to chip away, focus on something. Now, again, this is after the fact of knowing where you want to be, you know, generally what you like and dislike. But dive into it. And you know what? At no expense. Again, first part is experience the world at no expense. I don't, I'll be honest. Don't, I don't care if you rack up credit card debt. You'll know. Your, your, your biggest um, resource that you can lose is time. Money. Fuck money. Focus on your time. So get to know what you love first. And so the second thing is go where it's at. Don't try and recreate it. Because you can do so much more in the field or the thing that you love when you're around people that love it too. You'll find coworkers, you'll find partners, you'll find investors, you'll find people that just want to help you. So why try and reinvent all of that plus whatever you're trying to do? That's the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life is that I tried recreating this whole concept of uh, commerce that I was like, you know, I was going to reinvent all of this. And you know what the biggest problem is? You have to sell it to other people. And when you can't explain like, oh, well, this is new, this is new, this is new, and I'm doing this, and I'm creating my own new team, and I'm doing a whole new type of business, and I'll even create a new currency. I know that some of you guys have that sort of level of creativity out there. The problem is that's too much for other people, and it requires other people for you to succeed. So buckle down and go where the resources are at. So this is going to, some people are going to probably disagree with this, but honestly, I don't give a shit because this is where I have seen with my life. Again, you're looking at my uh, point of view for people like me. If you are trying to do an internet startup, go to Silicon Valley. I don't care if you go burn out and come back and then find something out there, but go to where the most resources are. And if it's not Silicon Valley anymore, go to Texas or go wherever, wherever else the new Silicon Valley is. Go there. Because you're going to have so many more chances. You're going to go to grab coffee and the guy you're going to bump into and you know, bullshit with and chat is going to be somebody that can help you. That sort of weird shit happens all the time. That sort of luck happens when you put yourself in those situations. So one of the things I would have told myself and I still tell myself is go where they're at. You want to be an actor? Go to LA. New York? Okay, sure, whatever. I, again, I'm not, that's not my realm of expertise. Again, you might talk to somebody who's in that realm with, while you're there. You're not going to find it in Monroe. And this is the biggest uh, problem I have, is that my success kind of short-sheeted my success. So this is what I'm trying to tell you, the younger version of me, to prevent, is that you will get stuck as you go on. It's kind of like molasses. The harder you push, the slower you can go. I don't, I don't know if that's molasses, but you know that, that whole thing where you tr you tr the harder you try, the worse it gets. And the problem is, is that once you start doing something, you get known for it. That's good. Success. Yay. The problem is 99% of the ways you could succeed in life are mediocre. And I don't think anybody that's watching this, all five or however many people watch this, I don't think you want mediocre. I think you're saying in your head, I want to be Bill Gates. I want to be bigger than Bill Gates, you know, from a financial standpoint. You want the most. And so why put yourself in a half-assed spot? And 99% of the ways you're going to go in life are half-ass. And you know what's nice is you can go in, realize it was shitty, go back out, go focus on something else. But what I'm telling you is something I would have avoided myself, is that if you're going to start something, start it where the people are. It's probably the best <laughs> Ariel from Little Mermaid Disney quote I can think of, is go where the people are. So the third biggest piece of advice that I can give to my younger generation of me is happiness. It doesn't work the way you think it does. It is part of success to fail. It is part of happiness to be sad. 
And what's so stupid, this is, this is probably me ranting about the way the human mind works, is that you can have everything. You can have all the resources where you literally tomorrow could go and buy another car. You could go and buy any materialistic thing you want and still be miserable to where you just don't know why you're alive. That's one of the biggest problems with life is that it ends. So you have this weird dichotomy, which is you know two, two issues, exact polar opposite issues, of that sometimes you wake up and you're like, I'm going to be dead anyway, so I might as well not deal with it. I mean, it's just something that's going to kind of happen anyway. You do get there. You get to that mindset of like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, life's going to kind of go on and, you know, it's inevitable. But then on the other hand, you're freaking out. And when it's three in the morning, you're freaking out going, oh, my God, life ends. I need to do something about it. I need to live. I need to be happy. And you know what? The biggest problem to all of this is that you're thinking. If I could tell myself the best advice is that, Rob, you are a smart kid. You, you're, you really, you know, you, you were a genius level when you were 13 and then you gained a personality. But dude, feel. Use your emotions because those drive you way harder than thoughts. Thoughts just make you worry. If you think, you worry. And that's the biggest bullshit about being smart because that's just intelligence. That's not actual life smartness. And so if I was talking to myself, you know, <laughs> beaming back in time, it's don't think, feel. And the problem is, when you first are younger and you feel, you're a dumbass. Your feelings are stupid. You chase down the wrong girl that gives you no attention. So it takes, it takes discipline over time of getting experiences, which so goes back to number one. So experience the world because as you experience it, you discipline your feelings. You know where your heart's at and you know where to go. So don't Focus so much on thinking. It sounds like shitty advice, but I'm just, I'm telling the people that are like me, that are, hopefully this reaches out to one person out there, two people, that makes it worth my energy of talking, is if you're so intelligent, you're going to find a higher quality of life feeling instead of thinking. Because your feelings are what make you move, or make you, or make you stay in bed, or get out of it, is use your feelings. Because Sounds dumb, but you watch a movie. You know, you watch a movie like uh, I just saw the Guardians of the Galaxy. There are moments where I'm happy and excited and I want to see the adventure and all those sort of things. That has to do with feeling. You know, nobody's telling me like, hey, you know, there's, there's going to be a movie and then this guy's going to say this. And then, you know, the intelligent part of this is that, no, that's boring. You, and yet it would be the same story being told. So when it comes to life, you can choose how you tell yourself your life story. And that's kind of what's going on is you think about it like, God damn it, yesterday I, I did this. And what are you doing? You're telling yourself a story. So instead of doing that, why don't you feel the story? Why don't you enjoy it? Take it in with your senses. And don't let your brain, which technically in my mind is, is another sense, don't let that kind of try and filter it. Feel it. Be in the moment. And I think that's the biggest problem I had when I was younger. And it slowed me down because I, I was trying to think. I was trying to rationalize how to make life good instead of just feeling and making it good. You know, I really appreciate everybody watching these videos because I feel like these are actually lower watched but higher engaging. And again, I'm up here. I don't know the answer to life. And that's, that's probably the last piece of advice I can give somebody is that even a guy like me or even the guys that are, you know, the real successful guys, monetary, they're still fucking miserable. I mean, if you see somebody getting a divorce and they've got half a billion dollars or whatever and the wife now has the other half or her husband now has the other half, it's neutral society nowadays, you can be sure that they're fucking miserable because they're going through a divorce. So it's one of those things where you, what you think, you tend to make other people's lives better and your life worse when comparing it to where you want to be. So everybody... What you, what you start realizing as you get older is everybody's struggling. Nobody has a damn clue what's going on. Now, they fake it. And, and they, to some extent, they believe it. Like, if you talk to me in person, you see me and you start talking to me, I'm in a pretty damn good mood. And I know where I'm going with my life. But I still question it. I still, at three in the morning, freak out the fuck that I'm not going to be here forever. It freaks me out. And then I realize if I go and just do and just experience life, it calms me back down because I'm not thinking about it. I'm doing, which is the whole reason I made this video because I got one of those like anxiety moments where I realized that this life ends and this is kind of one of my uh, stress reliefs and just makes me feel good. So appreciate the viewership. You know, I keep balancing it between business and cars and I think people appreciate that. So.
Till next time.